Hello. Must be Wednesday. Must be six o'clock. Hi, everybody. Come on on board. I have some news for you. I'm fixing my hair here. There's like stick out horns. I don't know. Um, hi. We try to make these even so that my Instagram camera is in the same place as tell me as usual. Tell me where you're watching from. That's the first thing. Hi, I'm Dr. Wendy Walsh. And if you don't know me, I have a PhD in clinical psychology, and I tend to specialize in the science of relationships, the biological, the social, and the psychological pieces. Hi, Rodney from Corona. How are you? Um, where are you guys calling? writing from Playa Vista? Hello, Kathy from Playa Vista. Tell me where you're at. Phoenix, Arizona. Hi, Joanne from Phoenix, Arizona. Let, give me a wave and let me know where you are. Linda's here from Pasadena. Hi, Linda. What would I do without you? You're a regular. A regular, Linda. Um, Monterey. Oh, that's a beautiful place. Welcome, welcome. Let me know where you are. Ventura. Hello from Ventura. Um, let me know where you're watching from and we will get going because I want to, I'm just going to wait a minute till it's fully six o'clock. Went on like a minute early um, because I have some news for you. If you are not somebody who listens to my podcast, Mating Matters, hello, Logan from Irvine, how are you? Um, then I would like you to um, go on, <laughs> listen, subscribe. But there's a particular episode that producer Brooke Peterson and I have been working on for months and months and months. And the episode launched today and it's called, hello, Anne from Atlanta. It is called Accidental Incest. Now, you know, my podcast, Mating Matters, is all told through a lens of evolutionary psychology. And evolution is, you know, Mother Nature is pretty perfect. She makes it that we don't actually have a sexual attraction to close relatives, right? Brothers and sisters generally don't hook up. Uh, now, fathers and daughters, if it happens, it's about coercion and sex abuse, and there's usually drugs or mental illness involved, etc. Hello, uh, Buster from Yorba Linda, how are you? And uh, let me know where you're watching from if you're over there on Facebook or YouTube or LinkedIn. I'm not seeing so many comments. It says can't post comments. Oh, there we go. Oh, uh, hi, Nate from Nashville, how are you? So this episode of Mating Matters podcast that I released today is on a phenomenon known as genetic sexual interaction. Now, get this, brothers and sisters don't have a sexual attraction to each other not only because of biological reasons, their pheromones smell funky, hello Miami, uh, but there's also a sort of a sexual aversion that takes place when you're raised together. There's something called the Westermark effect. And Westermark was a guy who studied communities of kids who were raised together, like kids in kibbutzes, et cetera. And he found that when you were raised with somebody and spent your developmental years together, even if you weren't biologically connected, you had no interest in having a romantic relationship with those people. However, if you miss that crucial developmental window and you actually are separated from a close family member and then meet years later, the opposite happens. Hi, Jeff from Phoenix. Um, you actually end up having a weird genetic sexual attraction. So it said the audio stopped. Hmm, I don't know how to make it go again. Jonesy, somebody said the audio stopped on Instagram. I don't know what I could do. Instagram, tell me if you can hear me yet. It said we can't hear you, or is it just me? Can someone else tell me? Somebody else on Instagram, tell me, can you hear me? Can you hear me on Instagram? See, the last one was audio stopped. Somebody waved. Can you hear me? Is the audio working? I see the joining. It's working. So Maria, it's working. So sorry, other person, it's just not working for you. Okay. So, and Periscope is working well. Good to hear. Good to hear. Okay. So uh, thank you that you hear me fine. It just takes, a, there's a little delay when the comments come through. So anyway, I want you to think about this. When you listen, I'm talking about the new episode of Mating Matters podcast that I released today called Accidental Incest. So if children are not raised together and then they're brought back together, sometimes there's this bizarre, huge attraction. And I interview people where it happened to and how their lives were ruined and bad things happened. And hopefully I handle it in a very um, sensitive way. 
Um, and I had um, my dear friend, Dr. Kevin Vulcan, who uh, is a colleague of mine at Cal State Channel Islands. And he's really interested in um, countercultural syndromes and, uh, you know, sort of the the stuff on the peripheral of human behavior. And so he really explains the Westermark effect really well, and he explains genetic sexual attraction. Now, here's the reason why this matters. Hello from Missouri. It matters because um, there's a lot of adoption going on, a lot of egg donation, a lot of sperm donation, often in small towns and communities, and kids around the same age are ending up on college campuses together, and they may be brother and sister and not know it. And we're talking like, I think there was even one case of a fertility doctor somewhere, was it Texas or the Midwest, who's well into his 80s now, but it turned out he was using his own sperm instead of the sperm that the women had chosen. And like 60 kids were given birth that were his genes. And all those kids go to the same schools together. I know, weird, right? Uh, <laughs> My eyebrows look fantastic. Do you do them yourself? I love these questions. Uh, well, today I shot my consumer attorney marketing group commercials. So we actually had a makeup artist on set. So you can thank Michelle, our makeup artist for coloring in my eyebrows. But I do go, you know, during COVID, I've been getting no personal care done. I've been doing it all myself, but I did put a uh, mask on and wander out a couple of weeks ago and get my gray eyebrows dyed brown and waxed a little bit. I just couldn't take it. It was just six months, right? Uh, okay, anybody got any relationship questions for me? Because I just put a rack of lamb in the oven and then I have an apple pie that's going in after it and some roasted cauliflower. So I gotta get to my dinner. But um, anybody have uh, a question for me about relationships? Hi Solange from Lake Tahoe. Hello Cam from North Liberty, Iowa. Who else we got here? Um, somebody says they have a question, but it says can't post comments from some def destinations. Any questions? Any questions? No questions about relationships. <laughs> How to stop being shallow. Well, get in touch with your own feelings. Good food time, 613, and then you'll be less shallow. Uh, yes, you can, uh, well, you can send it in a private message on one of my social media, uh, blackbird000. Uh, somebody asks if I'm married. No, I am not married at the moment. I have been everything in my life, by the way. I have been a girlfriend. I've been a live-in girlfriend. I have been married. I have been divorced. I have been a single mom. I've been everything. So I've had a lot of experience. Uh, for many of us, there's a high stake highlight. How could, oh, this is Brian, that's a great question. Let's put Brian's question up here. Uh, for many of us, this is a high stakes, highly emotional election. How we can, can we prepare to cope if the outcome is not what we hope for? I wanna remind everybody that we have far more in common than not, that most Americans want the same things, which are safe cities, clean air and water, education, access to education for our kids and secure jobs. We all want that. And the polarization that has happened in America is largely due to the growth of technology and social media. And the fact that in order to be heard, certain political parties have to like hit home on just a couple social issues. I mean, think of it. It's like the whole election is being decided on guns and abortion, like boil it down to two things. It's like, uh, okay, life is precious unless you step onto my front yard. Well, not precious. I don't know. It's kind of the same thing, right? So can we instead realize that we have far more in common than not? Now, coping with stress. Have an election day plan, folks. Make sure you have friends around. You can reach out. You've got a lifeline, somebody that you can call. You've got to have a plan on election day of who you're going to be with. And hopefully it's not friends that are going to spin you into a tizzy about the bad news that or good news that's happening. Also, please remember that, I mean, reach out to a friend from the other side. Congratulate them. If you have lost, then you have my full permission to grieve, okay? It's okay to take some time to feel sad. But I promise you, think about the here and now in your everyday life. The day after the election, I'm gonna make a prediction. Nothing will change in your life. 
your alarm is going to go off at the same time. Your breakfast is going to be there. You're going to go to work or whatever you work from home, but really nothing is going to change in a huge way. So I see a question on Instagram, Skyrev, uh, you have an anxious attachment and according to Sternberg, you need help. Well, therapy is one way to heal attachment injuries. And so regular consistent therapy can really change the way we attach. Um, anybody else have any other questions? Uh, okay, Rodney, I'll Google it later. Um, uh, oh, Shannon, he's in the podcast. I recorded him. So Shannon, here she is. I'll put her up between half siblings. Should I be worried? Ella, remember I was talking about genetic sexual attraction and my new episode of Mating Matters podcast called Accidental Incest that often because of adoption, when brothers and sisters aren't raised together, when they come back together, they have a sexual attraction. And there's actually one other component that you need to have. And you would have to listen to the podcast to find out that opponent. But Shannon is my niece. Uh, but her father, my brother, I was not raised with because he was adopted out. My mother had a teenage pregnancy and he was adopted in 1948. And so my new brother, Mike, as I like to call him, I think we've had you guys for how many years now, Shannon, like six years or something. Uh, he and I, um, he came to visit and we actually interviewed him. So can you please send, find the episode, just go to Mating Matters, wherever you get your podcast, Shannon and then take it and send it to your dad because I don't think he's on social media. Um, somebody wants to know how to deal with jealousy in a relationship, intimate or non-intimate. Okay, so that's about what's going on inside you. But here's the crazy thing. If you have feelings of uh, you know, threats of abandonment or loss and they show up as feelings of jealousy, sadly, if you haven't worked through them and processed them, you will actually tend to be attracted to people who will ignite those feelings for you? It's a crazy, you know, we have a repetition compulsion and uh, we are meant to repeat. Okay, I just have to put the cauliflower in the oven. Hang on one sec, because I got the lamb in there, but now it's time for the cauliflower. You have to pay attention to the time at the same time. Sorry, cooking dinner at the same time. So I got a rack of lamb in there that I crusted with rosemary, garlic, thyme, and sage, and olive oil and kosher salt. And then um, the way I do my cauliflower, <clears throat> excuse me, is I toss it in just olive oil, salt and pepper and roast it in pieces. And then 10 minutes before it's ready, I toss it with a little bit of breadcrumbs and squeeze some limes on it. So it gives a little tart and crunchy taste, which is nice. Okay, uh, Cam says, thank you for the, L congrats on the LA Dodgers winning. Um, any other question? You don't get rid of feelings. Okay, here's a good question. How do you get rid of feelings associated with jealousy? You're not supposed to get rid of feelings. You're supposed to explore feelings, right? You're supposed to spend some time working with a trusted um, therapist and you're supposed to find out what those feelings are really attached to. Because I guarantee they really don't belong in your adult life. They belong to some feeling of abandonment or loss that you experienced early in life, sadly. I don't mean to make light about it, but um, you know, our attachment style is programmed very early in life. Uh, okay, any more questions before I head to my dinner? Because I have so much. Um, <laughs> you can't see my dinner, but you can hear about it, right? And I also made a homemade apple pie. I was just in a mood. You see, I subscribe to this weekly farmer's box. They don't pay me money to say this, but I will tell you that the company's, it used to be called Farm Box LA, which I liked much better. It's all local organic farmers. Now it's called Grub Market. I guess they market to millennials with that Grub Market. So every Sunday I get this huge box of fruits and vegetables and meats and everything I need. And by Wednesday, I'm like, okay, I got to use some of the other stuff. So um, I, I just love to. So basically Sunday through Thursday or Wednesday, I cook. Then I get a little loose on Friday and Saturday and go out or order in. Believe me, my 17 year old would rather have a hamburger than a rack of lamb. It's crazy. Um, how can a therapist help you when they aren't the person who experienced the feelings? Because they're gonna ask all the right questions to help you access them, right? They're gonna help you find the answer that's inside of you. They're like a guide, right? That's how therapy works is that the therapist becomes, you know, some people call therapy reparenting, 
you know, they give you the kind of compassion and empathy, just water folks. Uh, do you see my Band-Aid? I was literally talking on the phone earlier to my daughter Carrington and I looked down and my finger was bleeding. I have no idea where that came from. I think it had to be when I was chopping and cooking. Uh, okay. Uh, Rodney, I don't remember every detail. Rodney asked me, do I remember the Alan Alda movie same time next year? Do you think it's a realistic story? Uh, do you think that happens to people? Absolutely. Uh, they were two married couples who would meet once a year for a family vacation at some kind of resort. And they had a love affair that lasted uh, for many years, as, as I recall. I can't remember how it all ended. Um, generally though, what happens with affairs is somebody wants a bigger commitment than the other can give and then it gets really messy. And there's a lot of pain involved. Um, oh, you will see, Ms. Du, that when you get the root of your feelings, they disappear. You know, I think I told this story last week, the four steps, the four stages to personal growth. So let's use the example of uncomfortable feelings. So the first stage is you're walking down the street, you don't see a hole, you fall in it. That hole is your relationship dynamics, choosing people who will let you down to remind you that you're getting abandoned, choosing people that will ignite your feelings of jealousy. That's your hole. You don't see it, you fall in it. Then you learn about where your feelings came from and oh, it's not really him. It's something that happened with my father in childhood or whatever it may be. And then you're walking down the street, you see the hole and you still fall in because that's just stage two. Stage three is, okay, this time I see the signs. I know the triggers. I know I'm gonna walk away from that person. And so you're walking down the street, you see the hole, you use your new powers to very carefully walk around the hole. But that's only stage three. Because stage four is you take a different street. You don't even need those feelings anymore. You can let them go. Um, all feelings are partly genetic. They're a biopsychosocial piece. But you know you can be born with a gene for heart disease and never have a heart attack because you make lifestyle changes, right? Every feeling we have is partly a genetic predisposition, partly what happened to us early in life and partly what's happening to us today. It's a whole combination. All righty. Any more questions before I go to my dinner? Because I'm really worried about burning everything. The timing. I'm hearing it sizzling, that lamb, and I want to get the pie in. I don't know. I'm just in a mood to cook. Maybe because the weather. Okay. You guys are going to laugh if you do not live in Southern California. The weather got fall-like. It went down for one day to like 65. It felt so crisp and cool. And if you're in Canada, what's a 65? 13, 14, 15 <laughs> Celsius. Uh, the low temperatures, I think in Celsius and the high temperatures, I think in Fahrenheit. Um, okay, if we have no more questions, then I will see you next Wednesday. Now, seriously, everybody, as soon as I say goodbye, I want you to go to wherever you listen to your podcast, whether it's iTunes, whether it's the iHeartRadio app, whether it's Google Play, whatever, wherever you listen to your podcasts. And I want you to download Mating Matters. And the new episode that came out today is called Accidental Incest. Um, oh, Charlene, you're late. I'm just wrapping up and she's got a good question too. Dating during COVID. Uh, I'll just tell you super fast. Um, I would start with not having too many people that you're talking to on apps, focus on one or two at once, get on the phone very quickly because your ears can assess so much better than looking at fake pictures on profiles. And then get together in a windy place outdoors with masks on, seriously, go for a walk, stand six, eight feet apart, um, take your time. There's no reason to rush, but don't juggle a whole bunch of people and if you want to do a virtual date, sure. I think one thing to do for a virtual date during COVID is both order takeout from the same restaurant and then open it together and compare what you got, whatever. Okay, uh, I love you all. Make sure you listen to Mating Matters and I will see you, sort of see you, uh, on my radio show every Sunday from four to six on KFI AM 640. We're live everywhere on the iHeartRadio app. Bye. Love you all.